Well, it's January the 2nd. Once again, Happy New Year, everybody. As we spent a few minutes in devotions, we've been talking about the life of Joseph for the last two days. New Year's Eve, it says this, here comes the dreamer. And we talked about the importance of dreaming. And yesterday we talked about in our dreams being faithful in the small things. But today I want to talk about faithfulness a little bit further and talk to you about being faithful to others. Faithful to others. Genesis chapter 37, verse 12 and 13. Now Joseph's brothers had gone to graze their father's flock near Shechem. And Jacob, Israel, said to Joseph, As you know, your brother brothers are grazing the flocks near Shechem. Come, I'm going to send you to them. Very well, he replied. Shechem means this. It means back or it means shoulder. Yesterday we learned that Joseph was faithful in small things. And to use this phrase Shechem, you could almost say he was faithful out the back. He was faithful out of sight. I got to tell you, there's been many, many times in my life that I, I've, I've had to learn the lesson of being faithful when nobody sees and nobody knows. I remember a season in my life when I was saving up to go to Bible college and I was working in a foundry in country Queensland and it was hot. By 7.30 every morning in this corrugated iron shed with, with the foundry burning and the molten metal burning and melting, I, I, by 7.30 we would be drenched with sweat and it was out in the middle of nowhere. It would take us so long to drive there. I'd wake up at 5 in the morning and leave for work at 5.30 to start for 7 o'clock and, and the hours were long and crazy and, and the pay wasn't all that great to be honest. And it was out of sight out of mind for many people. But you know what I was learning? I was learning the lesson to be faithful to others. I was out the back, or if you like, shoulder. But also when we think about Shechem and learning about faithfulness, it's understanding that faithfulness is found in whose back you've got and who's got your back. Imagine Joseph's surprise in this account in chapter 37, 38, 39, 40 of Genesis. Imagine his surprise when he arrived at his brother's side to discover they didn't have his back. They actually wanted to stab him in the back. They wanted to kill him, but relented by selling him into slavery. His brothers didn't have his back. Now, later on in the story, when famine hits, and we know, having read the story before, that Joseph is made the prime minister of Egypt. He's in charge of the whole land. The Bible says in Genesis 42, 1 to 2, when Jacob learned that there was grain in Israel, he sent his sons. Why do you just keep looking at each other? He continued. I have heard there is grain in Egypt. Go down there and buy some for us so that we may live and not die. This is amazing to me. Because the unfaithful brothers with the big idea in chapter 37 to kill Joseph, all right, we'll sell him into slavery, they end up completely clueless. Now, here's the thing. If you sow unfaithfulness to people, you will end up like the brothers, in a famine, without clue, clueless. And so the lesson that we learn from Joseph is this, is learn to be faithful not just in the small things, but learn to be faithful to others. What does faithfulness to others look like? Well, let me give you six things. Firstly, it's being honorable in speech. The way you speak about them, not just publicly and not just to them, but it's what you say about them, how you say things about them, and your motivations for speaking about people, all of those things show faithfulness or not. Did you know you can be faithful in speech to people who are unfaithful? Unfaithful speech about others looks like gossip, etc., doesn't it? But actually, we're called to be faithful, so to be honorable in speech. The second thing it means to be faithful to others is protecting their back when others attack. It's the idea that we recognize that nobody's perfect. Everybody's fallible. Everybody's got their weaknesses and challenges. And so our choice is to protect other people's back when others attack. The third thing is this. 
is closing, closing the mouth of the gossiper. You know, when you are in a conversation and people are speaking negatively about others or gossiping about others, if you, if I, if we don't close those conversations down, then we are just as guilty as the gossiper. And the Bible says that the Lord hates gossip. The fourth thing, what does faithfulness look like to others? It's going straight to the horse's mouth. So in other words, rather than talking about somebody, why not go directly to that person and say, hey, listen, I've got an issue. I need to talk it through with you. The fifth thing it means is this, is to be a person where my word is my bond. What you say is what you do. And the reality is this, we all lead busy lives. And invariably, from time to time, we will forget things. That's why we have to be forthcoming in apologizing to people when we do forget. And I think the sixth thing that faithfulness to others look like is going the extra mile, going the extra mile, not just doing what is asked, but going one step further. And I wonder, as you reflect on being faithful to others, I wonder how that impacts you today. As you think about your family, what does it mean to be faithful to your marriage covenant, to the way you parent your children? In what area of your life is maybe unfaithfulness beginning to creep in? Maybe today's a day to make a decision one more time. Today I choose to be a faithful man or a faithful woman. I wonder what it means to be faithful to an enemy. Because anybody can be faithful to a friend, but how do you become faithful to an enemy? Certainly with an enemy, friendship needs not be the desire, but to be faithful means not to speak negative, but to speak faith and forgiveness over those who are maybe enemies, people who betrayed us, whether it be in the workplace, relationships, or whatever it may be. So yesterday, we learned about being faithful in little things. Today, we learned the importance of being faithful to others. And Father, I pray that you would help us in 2024 to be a faithful people in Jesus' name, faithful in the little and faithful to others. Thank you, God, that as you look at our faithfulness, we know that big things can be entrusted to us because we were faithful in the unseen, we were faithful in the small, and we were faithful to other people. Bless our church in Jesus' name. Have a great day, church. I'll see you tomorrow.